The following review may contain spoilers. Never Rarely, Sometimes Always is a new film from writer-director Eliza Hittman. The writing is excellent and the overall concept of the film lends itself to many of the film's very profound themes. A teenage girl named Autumn decides to get an abortion and finds it extremely difficult as many factors get in the way. First would be the clinic in rural Pennsylvania that immediately encourages Autumn to have the baby. They hand her a bunch of pamphlets and show her a video and attempt to convince her to avoid having the abortion. Another thing preventing her from having easy access to this medical procedure is that she can't even tell her own parents. The shame and embarrassment a girl would feel revealing, to, revealing this to her parents and subsequently her community trumps her own physical and mental well-being. A really great decision by Hitman on the writing of the script was to not focus any attention at all on the father. It goes with the film thematically as it questions men's treatment of women in our society. We're going through the female character's harrowing journey, and through a lot of that journey, she has to deal with ill treatment at the hands of men. This is a woman's story, a woman's issue, and we don't need anything from the father's point of view at all. The film also gives us these little scenes of misogyny and sexual harassment. A creepy co-worker at the supermarket that the two girls work at kisses the hands of our two characters every time money is passed on to him through a small window. And there's a little moment where they meet a young man on the bus ride to New York City where he touches one of the characters on the arm for way too long. It's little moments like these that take us into the world of being a young vulnerable girl and realizing there's so much being thrown at them that even things like the invasion of personal space have to be kind of dismissed because of misogyny and gender discrimination having a much uh, larger existential effect and that's what they have to focus on. They have to basically choose their battles which is unfortunate and extremely unfair. The most powerful scene in the film is in the middle where Autumn is interviewed by a counselor at the Planned Parenthood in New York and is asked a series of questions about her sexual history. This scene is just flat out brilliantly written. Hitman ingeniously weaves in only a smattering of exposition in a very natural way via this interview with the counselor. It is revealed that Autumn is a victim of a lot of abuse from her boyfriends and tearfully and hesitantly admits she was raped at some point in her life. This single scene makes the film worth watching alone. If you cut this scene out, it would have been a masterpiece of a short film by itself. And this is where the four words in the title of the film come into play, as the questions that are asked of Autumn have to be answered with one of them, never, rarely, sometimes, or always. Questions to the effect of, are you ever forced into sexual activity against your will? Please answer with, never, rarely, sometimes, always. The title just goes so well with the theme of the film and works on multiple levels. It applies literally to the questioning at hand in the scene, but it could also apply broadly as we the viewer are encouraged to think about the women we know and how often they may deal with similar difficulties and trauma in their own lives. I'm just not a big fan of Hitman's cinematography choices. With this film and in her previous film Beach Rats, she goes for like a vintage look but I, I just don't understand why. In the beginning of this film, there's some kind of 1950s throwback talent show at Autumn's High School. With the vintage-looking cinematography, I actually thought it was a period piece for a second. This vintage-looking cinematography doesn't really add anything to the story. Um, I don't think it was a budgeting issue because of the technology available today. If you look at any YouTube channel that attempts to teach its audience how to make professional-looking films for cheap, you can see how far most DSLRs and cheap light, kit, cheap light kits can go. I'm sure she had the budget to have a more modern look, but she just chose this look and there doesn't seem to be a lot of justification for it. Also, Hitman is a gifted writer, but she strikes me as a filmmaker that pretty much thinks the majority of the filmmaking process is done as soon as the script is finished. There is really not a lot of thought put into the shot composition at all, 
She tends to settle for close-ups and handheld shots with really not a lot of detail in any of the shot composition throughout. The tight cinematography makes the audience lose the scope of the character's surroundings and in turn the audience sort of loses the character's full experience as well. The most obvious, the most obvious example of this would be the two girls from rural Pennsylvania taking a trip to New York City and we're not really getting their perspective about leaving leaving their small town to go to the big city. They would clearly have to take in the sights of the city and all of its commotion, but the camera is always so tight on them and always in constant reliance of the close-up that we never get a sense of this at all. On a minor note, there's a weird choice to have the characters lug a giant suitcase around New York City. It's odd because it's revealed in the film that they are actually surprised to find out that the late-term abortion takes two days. If they were planning to be there for only a day, then why did they bring an entire suitcase? It's not clear what's even in the suitcase as we assume it's just clothes. Perhaps it was uh, to work as a visual metaphor as the characters not only psychologically but physically bear a heavy load. But the suitcase really wasn't justified and quite frankly it became an annoyance as a viewer. My final rating for Never Rarely Sometimes Always is 3 stars. Eliza Hittman is clearly a gifted writer and is tackling some important subject matter to shed light on. I will definitely be looking out for her work in the future.